since the dawn of time, man has constantly pondered many questions. What is our purpose? Where did the universe come from? What is the meaning of life? Today, we will discuss something completely different. Gases. a French physicist named Benoit Paul Emile Clapeyron, and I'll repeat that because it's one heck of a name, Benoit Paul Emile Clapeyron first stated the ideal gas law as such. And from now on, Benoit Paul Emile Clapeyron shall now be referred to as BPEC. Our man BPEC was also an accomplished engineer and one of the founders of thermodynamics which has proved to cause unending suffering for Daniel Barr. To help us understand the ideal gas law, Clancy Griggs will be representing one singular gas molecule under the terms of an ideal gas. He weighs approximately 2.81 times 10 to the 27th more than one gas molecule. The ideal gases have a few general assumptions. An ideal gas has no volume and therefore no mass. An ideal gas experiences no attractive forces between particles. Ideal gas is completely elastic between other particles and its container walls. However, in 1873, the Nobel Prize winning physicist Johannes Diedrich van der Waals derived an equation that solved the issue with the ideal gas law. When studying the ideal gas law and its properties, van der Waals noticed that actual gas molecules do have a volume, even though it is an incredibly small amount. The gas particles also have attractive and repulsive forces that allow them to interact with each other, so he modified the ideal gas law equation. has a volume and therefore a mass. Yeah, the real gas has attractive and repulsive forces between other particles. Oh, the real gas is not elastic against other particles and its container wall. Thanks for your help, Clancy. I think we all understand now. <laughs> 